Today's beginner quilt pattern is all about half square triangles. This dash buster uses the two at a time HST method. It's fast, easy, fat quarter friendly, free with no wastage. I'll give you tips for a perfect point, a hack to square up your blocks, plus a special announcement about this dash buster series. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. The easiest quilt patterns are made from squares and rectangles, but I've already shown you how to do that in Stash Buster 1, 2, 7, and 9. Today we are taking it up a notch with half square triangles. Half square triangles can give you all sorts of beautiful results depending how you lay it out. And I am going to show you how to lay them out in a traditional carpenter's star. This pattern comes in a small, medium, and large version. In this video, we will be making the medium version. Before we talk about technique, let's talk about the fabric because the trick to this layout is all about contrast. The Carpenter Star's true beauty comes from the three-dimensional effect. Carpenters achieve this with different wood grains and stain. Quilters get to use a combination of color, saturation, and value. If you're unsure of these terms, please watch my series on color theory. So we're looking for three distinct values. In the lightest, you will need eight fat quarters or two yards. In the darkest, you will need four fat quarters or one yard. And in the medium tone, you'll also need four fat quarters or one yard. When you're shopping from your stash, line up your fabrics, then order them by value and take a black and white photo. This will help us identify which fabrics are the darks, the mids, and the light values, as well as any that are in the wrong spot. Once you have your dark, medium, light fabrics, we are wanting to make four sets of light, mid, and dark. Additionally, we need four extra lights. You need to see if there's enough contrast between your groups. And I like to do that by folding them into approximate shape and size of the final blocks. And remove anything that's not distinct enough, like these ones, or any patterns that you feel are not working. Because this fat quarter bundle did not have enough darks or mids all in one color, I am choosing two red and two blue groupings. And once you make your choices, do one final layout just to make sure that it's all working. I also need four more light fat quarters, and unfortunately these ones are too dark, so I had to dig into my stash and I came up with this one. Give your fat quarters a good press before you start. Use a dry iron and if necessary, spritz with water to remove the creases. If you can't remember the last time you changed your rotary blade, do it now. Take one set of dark, medium, and light fat quarters and lie them flat on your cutting board, aligning the selvages in the bottom. Trim the bottom to make it square. Measure 18 inches and trim the top. Then trim off the selvages, measure 18 inches, and cut. Save these cutoffs, we're going to use them later. Measure 9 inches from the right and cut, then measure 9 inches up from the bottom and cut. You'll have 12 9 inch squares for light, for mid, and for dark. Now if you've pre-washed your fabrics, you may not have 18 inches to work with. So see the patterns for some alternate cutting block sizes. To make long straight cuts, you need to be pushing your rotary cutter away from you. So don't hesitate to move around your tabletop or rotate your cutting mat to make this happen. From your cut squares, you're going to make two pairs of light and dark. You're going to make two pairs of light and medium. Then you're going to make two pairs of medium and dark. With the remaining four light fat quarters, stack them right side up and align them bottom 
and the selvages. Trim to square up along the bottom, then measure 17 inches and trim. Then trim off the selvages, then measure 17 inches and cut. And remember to keep the cutoffs for later. And then measure up eight and a half inches from the bottom and cut. Measure eight and a half inches from the right and cut. Now you have 16 light eight and a half inch squares. These light squares we're going to use in the background. So just put them aside for now. Take a marking pencil. We are using the two at a time HST method, which means we mark a line on the diagonal, then sew a quarter of an inch on either side. Lay one of your square sets on your mat. So not only are the sides parallel, to the vertical and horizontal lines, the two opposite corners are also lie on the 45 degree line. Make a ledge of masking tape, six to eight pieces thick, and place along the top. Make a similar ledge and place it along the side. With the square out of the way, trim the ledges on the diagonal. Now you can tuck your square into the jig, butt your ruler up to the masking tape, and quickly and easily mark your diagonal. When you have a lot of squares to mark, this jig setup makes it fast and easy. You can use any pen, pencil, or marker as long as it's washable. Before you start, take a second to clean your machine and change your needle if necessary. Also grab some crumbs to use as leaders to bury those first threads into. Pin twice on the diagonal line to stop your squares from shifting while you sew. Then trim a quarter of an inch off the tip of the corners. Use a leader to bury your threads in at the beginning. Then align the diagonal line with the quarter inch mark on your presser foot. So a quarter inch seam down one side of the diagonal line, then turn it around and then sew down the other side of the diagonal line. You can make your HST blocks one at a time or in chains. I like to process them in sets. Before we trim, give your seams a good press. No swishing your iron here. We just want to flatten the seams. Align your ruler between the diagonal seams. This does not need to be perfect. This is one time when accuracy is not so important. Pressing your half square triangles well means your points will be more accurate. Set your seams, roll over your fabric, and finger press and then press with a hot iron. Again, this is a bias seam, so be careful not to stretch it with your fingers and not to swish with your iron. Be sure to watch my video, A Really Good Arning Technique. It's an oldie, but a goodie, and I'll leave a link to it in the notes below. And I press to the dark side. This part can be pretty tedious, so be sure you've got some music or a good audio book to listen to while you do it. And when they're all done, you should have four pairs of each set, 16 of each type. Now we need to trim these blocks to eight and a half inches. And this is one of my favorite hacks. Most of you will not have an eight and a half inch ruler. So use the next size up. Take your masking tape and layer four to five strips on the back of the ruler along the diagonal. Trim the end squares. Take one HST, turn your ruler so that the highest numbers are in the top right hand corner. Push the ledge into that diagonal seam so it's nice and tight. Then trim the block square. Then spin your mat, slide the ruler down the diagonal seam until the bottom corner aligns with the eight and a half inch mark. Then square up your block. And now you have a perfect HST and repeat with the remaining HST blocks. And note that if you don't have a rotary cutting mat, it's almost as easy just to use a regular cutting mat and spin that. 
This is always where the magic begins to happen. And we are making four sets of this layout. I press all blocks to the dark side, except for these two. I press to the light. I sew the blocks together into rows. With row one and three, we press to the left. With rows number two and four, we press to the right. When you sew your rows together, press the seams upward. And when you sew all your sections together, you spin your seams. Spinning your seams reduces the bulk of all those intersecting seams in the middle. And I explained how to do this in my Quilt Coach series, episode number three. And I'll leave a link to that video in the notes below. So now your quilt top measures 64 and a half inches by 64 and a half inches. I would like my quilt to be a bit taller. From the cutoffs of the darks and the mid value fabrics, I was able to cut blocks four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. From the lights, I was able to get two different sizes, one two and a half inches and one two inches. And I sewed them together in strips and I was able to make a band for both the top and the bottom and I sewed it to the quilt top. Which means my quilt is now 79 inches tall. But if required, you can make your quilt taller with a wider border. You just need more fabric. And this is all the scrap I have left over. These strips I'll use in my strip blocks. And of course, these crumbs will go into my crumb strips. For tips on how to finish your quilt, check out my videos, six ways to make a quilt sandwich, 10 fast and easy quilt patterns, and how to bind your quilt. This quilt does take a little bit longer than my regular Stash Busters, but it is larger. And honestly, there's really no shortcuts for a good HST. If you want those points, you need to use a good technique. You can find this Stash Buster on my website, just get it done quilts.com under patterns and downloads. I have redesigned the stash buster page so you can watch the video and download the pattern from the same place. And new and exciting, now all my stash busters have coloring pages on prequilt. So if you want to test out the pattern with colors your way or something slightly different or maybe some holiday themes, it is as easy as changing the colors. And you can access these coloring pages from exactly the same place. If you like stash busting as much as I do, check out my stash buster playlist. I'll also leave a link to Karen's quilt circle playlist. I have interviewed so many interesting quilters. Let one inspire you. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you next time.